first course bridge intro outro is like structurally i feel satisfied that i listened to a complete song all right today i'm checking out a short stack no a stack of shorts a stack of short descendant songs all right today i'm checking out a stack of short descendant songs starting with m16 let's get into it That was a strong 43 seconds. I mean, there's just a whole message in a little 43 seconds going into a 43 second song called M16. I don't say anything about it. I know M16's military weapon, right? The civilian version AR-15. Yeah, you know, I know, but an M16, I know what it is. And I did not think past. Oh, song about a gun. Here we are. Okay, this is their comment on whatever is going on with the military at the time. We got annotations we could see. And they're talking about a war. He didn't know how he was killing people for freedom and your life's more than his and all this. And all this kind of deep war politics and stuff and, and thoughts and whatnot. And yeah, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Nobody likes war. No, some people do like war. Average people don't like war. And they don't like killing people or seeing people get killed or bombed or innocent people getting bombed or even not. In, you know, no one likes to see that kind of activity. And we don't like that it's going on. I want to click these annotations. What war are they talking about specifically? I'm just kind of curious. Okay, we got that first annotation. The classic American man carries a high-powered rifle, protects state rights, and, and lives a rebel life instead of supporting the freedom, love, and often negatively perceived part of the country. Milo stands his ground. He prefers a more quiet, normal life. Okay, this is from King of the Hill or something? What is, what is that? What does that show? Then we got this. Verse 2 is annotated. Holy crap. Okay, they wrote a whole dissertation. Verse 2 says, shoot him. You're better than him. Shoot him in the eye. Shoot him. It gives you a thrill. Just like a kid, only now it's real. Because as a kid, I used to play video games. And you know what I'm saying? You're doing all the shoot 'em up stuff, BB guns, Nerf guns, all kind of stuff. Probably video games. The line, just like a kid, only now it's for real, is a possible reference to the controversy surrounding violent video games, which first formed around the time that Milo goes to college, was recorded and released, providing this. Okay, yeah, he's talking about video games. I probably shouldn't read this whole, this whole dissertation they wrote. I appreciate the detailed uh, annotations and whatnot. This song was released in 1982? Wait, that, is that right? This is September 4th, 1982 on Genius. What, what video games, what violent video games were out in 1982? I don't know what consoles and stuff. Was it the arcade games or was it Atari? They had violent video games on Atari? I'm thinking it was newer than that, but okay. Because you know, matter day, you got Call of Duty and you know, a whole bunch of violent games. You can have some kind of crazy experience, VR, all kind of stuff. But anyway, okay, I guess we shouldn't be talking about this for too long. We gotta go to the next song. Kids on coffee. That last topic, that one you just talk about a long time. You can argue with people and lose family and friends over. Yeah, that's one of those hot topics. You can really, you can get going on that. We can talk about that forever. All right, today I'm checking out the Descendants. I'm listening to the song Kids on Coffee. Let's get into it. Warning: The base master general has determined that coffee is good for your health. chemistry sleep is now optional oh <laughs> these short songs are good they feel like complete songs that in 45 seconds let's have three verses how many choruses one two three four choruses it has an intro it has an outro it has a bridge you know what i mean this is like a whole song just packed in a micro package so like the verses are short and stuff but when you have that whole structure 
You know, I just listen to verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, intro, outro. It's like structurally, I feel satisfied that I listen to a complete song. To do all that in 45 seconds is wild. No, kids on coffee. I feel like it's about it's about what it is. I guess at some point in time in history, this is 1986. Coffee was recommended for everybody. Were kids really drinking coffee back in the day? I don't know. Modern day, even I know some kids that drink coffee. I think they drink decaf or something like that. But that's probably what it is. It says warning: the base master general has determined that coffee is good for your health. Either they're joking or they're really it's like social commentary on back in the day they were recommending that kids drink coffee. But that's just crazy. How you can have a 45 second song that it feels complete. Sometimes with the short songs, you feel like what? They they just spit out like a creative wad of something. But this doesn't feel like that. It feels like a structured song. And they got their issue off in 45 seconds. They didn't need to be any longer or any shorter. You know what I mean? It feels complete. Now the next song we got Suburban Home. Let's get into it. I want to be stereotyped. I want to be classified. Okay. I wanna be stereotyped. I wanna be classified. I wanna be home. I wanna suburban home. Suburban home. Suburban home. Suburban home. I wanna be nasty kissing. to be classified. What? I couldn't figure out if they were being serious or not. Who wants to be stereotyped? Yeah, not many people. Who wants to be classified? Okay, people to kind of do like self-classify and self-group. I couldn't tell. But the sound of the song, it, it's not giving suburbia. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't know, or is it? Is it like, you know, a young teenage rebel who lives in suburbia with his mom and dad? It could be that, like the teenage angst rebellious kind of attitude. Because where else would that? Yeah, it might be suburbia, but is he serious? Is he went home to be a suburb? I don't know, but it's like fun sounding song. You know what I mean? That was fun. I'm pulling up the annotations uh, because I'm a very curious human being. I love having the lyrics on the annotations. I just want to look at two lines. The I want to be stereotyped and classified. And then the I want to be a clone. I want a suburban home. That's all we need. And we'll know everything from that. Oh my goodness. Okay. Daniel S. Traver presents the idea of hardcore punk as a way of self-marginalization and as LA's white minority punk in the contradictions of self-marginalization. Okay, so he literally wants to be self-marginalized, wants to be stereotyped, wants to be stereotyped and classified. Punk's adoption of marginality as a way to experience real life proves to be a belief in something transparent. Thus, they manipulate their identities in the name of choosing one they situate as less contaminated by middle-class illusions of conformity Okay, I want to be a clone. I want a suburban home. So he's serious. He does want to be stereotyped. He does want to be clone. He wants to be marginalized. I thought he was being sarcastic because nobody wants to be stereotyped. Unless the stereotype is good, I guess. The stereotype helps you get a job or something. But rereading them. Yo, these annotations are deep on these songs. Holy smokes. But rereading American hardcore intersectional privilege in the lyrics of early Californian hardcore punk. Like, we're getting into serious topics. Serious topics right now. Interprets this song as a product of its environment. Poisoned by privilege, it represents degeneracy and punk ideology. Obviously, it's sarcastic. Okay, it is sarcastic. Okay, there, that's what I was wondering. But there's, there's too much truth in its origin. In his essay? Yo, we're quoting essays right now? I, I wasn't trying to get that serious. I just, in general, I just want to know. They say he's being sarcastic. Okay. 
okay, we're being sorry. I want to be a clone. I want some brain Okay, so, so we're somewhere in between self-marginalization and sarcasm. Okay, we're at the crossroads of that, which is why it was kind of confusing because some of the stuff is like, yeah, yeah, no one wants to be stereotyped, the classified or this or suburban. Okay, some people, I feel like some of the stuff I would want, some of the stuff I wouldn't want, I want a suburban home. That's why I moved to the suburbs. I don't want to be certain. You know what I mean? We're at the crossroads. There's a lot going on. We're self, okay, okay, I'm cooked. I'm cooked. We're self-marginalized, but we're also sarcastic, okay? I don't know. Tell me, man, what do you know? What do you know? Me and my boys on the road. Where to go? She told me, boy, you to go. Like, I don't know.